Hi everybody, it's me Tonic TTW, and I'm back with a stream highlight from uh, last night's stream. It's not the one that Jin wanted me to put up first, um, but I had a brilliant game in this one, so I thought I would share this one first. Um, we had a rough start to the night last night, and it was impossible to get a win. Um, but we managed to turn that round, and we finished the night with a 50-50 split on wins and losses. And this was one of those games where we really turned the night around for ourselves. So we've got myself, Chin, and uh, Full Potato Jack is with us again. So Jervis, Belfast, and Nelson. And we are on Tears of the Desert, spawning on Sea Cap to the south edge of the map. Now, I always say three jobs here, spot, capture, kill. And as the TD, I'm going to start heading straight towards our cap and uh, see what we can get spotted out here and see what we can do to take um, control of this cap or at least to contest it until perhaps FPG can get into position with his radar. But we're going to push straight out. There is a carrier in this game, and I'm very wary of that. And uh, you'll notice that I'm not running twist or twist and track or perceptive on the Jervis, and that's because I was playing with a torpedo reload build on my destroyers, my British destroyers, and I forgot to change it because it is a useful tool. It's a bit like a cheat mode, you know. It gives you the approximate direction to a, or the closest enemy ship. Um, and I'm going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage pushing into this cap because I'm sure there's a destroyer out here, but uh, I have no idea where he is. But thankfully, we have a very good carrier player on our team um, in the Vaser, and he is going to do a great job. He always seems to be in the right place at the right time. And uh, I would dare say that he is um, as skillful as Chin Laden is in his carriers. We get the Akatsuki spotted, we pop our smoke screen, um, we drop detection, and I call on FPGA to pop his radar. Um, FPGA then says, I'm not quite in range yet, and I'm like, oh shit, well in that case, I'm not going to sit on my smoke screen because I don't want torpedoes coming through at me, and there we go. So Mr. Akatsuki has spammed all his torpedoes, I'm thinking we've probably got about a minute or so to hunt this guy down now. But we're going to push out a little bit wider on the cap, just so if those ships push in there, that I'm not quite in um, detection range. We get our guns across the Synop, we pop our short smokes, and uh, we're going to get a couple of fires on this Synop to start. Now, one of the good things about the British destroyers is once you get, is it Truitt, up to Legendary 3 and use the Smogathon perk, you can overlap your smoke screens. So you don't get a big long smoke screen like the American destroyers, but you do get lots of little short ones. The carrier gets the Akatsuki spotted again, so straight away we forget the big ships that are pushing towards the cap. We want this Akatsuki. As he's got planes overhead, we see the torpedoes at a very, very early stage, which gives us ample opportunity to get out of the way of them. And we've got to stay on these guns and get rid of this Akatsuki. We want everybody on him. Get him off the map. Don't give him the chance to do any damage to our team. We land the killing shot there. We've avoided all of his torpedoes, and we're going to turn out, and we're just going to pop that smoke there, and use it as a screen to drop detection from the two Shan Horse, Sinop and the Helena. Now they might think that I'm going to sit in that smoke screen and they couldn't be more wrong to be honest. I just needed that one to um, hide my arse end so that I can then move around and keep these guys spotted for the team because I'm no use sat in that smoke screen doing nothing for the team. We may have the carrier overhead with his planes doing a very good job but um, if I'm out here as well, I'm able to do you know, a good job in keeping these guys spotted. And with the duration of these smoke screens being quite short, there's going to be another one come up very soon indeed. 
So these two Shan Horse are in division. They've got the Sinop backing them up. Um, we've already lost, obviously, the Destroyer from the center. We've lost a battleship from a cap to the north. And we've got a couple of sets of torpedoes running on these Shanies. And he's going to take a couple to start. Very shortly. Here we go. ba -bum. No floods. But the second set is already on its way. And they are going to be the end of that guy. No matter how close they are, will to rebuild is not going to save them. Now, I do get spotted there by the second Shan Horst, and I start going H E on him to put some fires in. And one thing that you'll notice is he does turn his turrets towards me. And uh, I do remark on the live stream that he's going torps on me, because if anything, you would think if he's put his turrets there, he could at least try a blind fire shot. Uh, but he doesn't, and so I'm absolutely certain that there are torpedoes on the way across here. But for as long as we can, we're going to steer guns on him. There come the torpedoes. It's a nice wide spread that gives me the opportunity to slide between them and stay on this Shan horse. We get a fire on him. He's almost dead. That fire is going to tick him out. But no, the battleship is going to launch a full salvo on him and take the last 10 hit points. And I don't want to say steal take that kill away from me um but there we go we missed out on kill number three we get out of the sit up we've got torpedoes running on him i'm thinking he's not going to survive this because i've got another salvo available to me um and i'm so surprised that he disappears so quickly that i actually instead of clicking off torpedoes i actually launched the second salvo um but that andrea doria absolutely um twatted him <laughs> <laughs> for want of a better word. Um, but we are secure on this cap. The hill in it is out there who have been asking people to shoot for ages. But uh, nobody's interested in shooting at a cruiser. You know, the same kind of cruiser that they complain about burning them down forever and ever and ever. Um, but now he's the only ship here. So he's got the attention of the team. Realising that we've pretty much lost a cap. And there's only one ship across there who is running for their life. Um, anybody who was on B cap um, came round to C. So I guess it's my job as the fastest and least detectable ship on the map to push across and try and secure B cap. Because this game is swinging from red to blue to blue to red with the points as ships get killed. We're on one cap each. So B cap is going to be the controlling force in this game so i have a look at what i'm up against and uh, i then start pushing as fast as i can through to b cap red team's gator is spotted now he is in division with a koenig and a nevada and uh, we have a poltava out there who is sailing completely broadside to the destroyer whilst trying to run away from the koenig and the nevada and off in the distance there, we see him eat a full double salvo of torpedoes from the Gator. Um, but that's going to be beneficial to me, because I know that he has just fired his torps. So all he's got available to him is his guns. The Vaser is going to do an amazing job here of getting this guy spotted and keeping him spotted. Yeah, you know, we've already been denied one kill. Now, I think this Gator is going to keep tracking across because I think they want to go for, you know, a, a complete team wipe. But with a carrier above him, he starts evasive maneuvers. We get our guns onto him. We pop our short smoke. I can see that our carrier has planes overhead, so I can sit in this smoke and let the carrier do the spotting so that I can get on with my guns and stay undetected. Now, even if he does get a torpedo reload up, I am ready to move. We are staying on our guns, getting ready to bump out this smoke screen. We get shots over. We get another fire on him. He is popping a smoke screen, just about to tick down to fire. And uh, the Vaser picks him up with bombs. So that's uh, a kill denial number two on this one. But with the Gator out of the way, we are now going to push through. And we're going to secure B cap, which was our intention all along. 
There is still the Helena out there who's uh, undetected. We have the Congo and the Nevada in sight. And uh, I have no idea where their carrier is. But to be honest, at this stage, I don't care. I am so confident in uh, the abilities of Alvesa here that um, should the carrier start to cause me any problems, that he will come and drop um, fighter planes across the top of me and keep me safe. Congo is giving us, no, not Congo, Koenig. Koenig has given us a lovely broadside out there. Or is it Congo? My eyes are failing me. No, it's Koenig. The Koenig is giving me a lovely broadside. So we get some HA out there. We get some fires on them. Because fires are fun. Fires are tick damage. And fires are annoying as hell to battleship players. Now he is going to let those burn. I'm aware that the Nevada is trailing behind him. And if I was him, what I would have done is slowed down a little bit. And, um, well, he might have will to rebuild on. He might not. Um, but we've got a salvo of torps running out there. We are popping our last smoke screen shortly. And we're going to steer and try and get another fire on him. While those torpedoes are running. He sees them coming. He starts to turn. I'm not going to get a big hit on him, but he is going to take one and get a flood. So, because he's just damage controlled um, his fires, he now has a flood. That last salvo of HE put another fire on him, and it's every man for himself now as uh, people try to uh, pick this kill up as well. And uh, this, is, this is one of the things about being a little DD. You do all this hard work, and then... Uh, everybody else is trying to pick it up from you but there we go there is kill number three so we could have had a kraken by now had we been a, a little bit more lucky with um, people's timing of shots but uh, there we go we switch our attentions to the nevada i'm confident that we've got two capture points secure the points are well they are in our favour, but they're not firmly in our favour. There's kind of one kill um, in this which could switch, and the um, the Helena is still out there. And this is where the Vesa is going to do a cracking job as well. I'm thinking about pushing across to this final cap. We have a couple of torpedoes available, and we're just going to put them out there towards the Nevada, when that very single lonely torpedo that I launched um, connects with him and takes him out of the game. So I'd like to think that here we are, we have a very secure hold on two of the capture points. We have the ship advantage now. Um, we've got myself, FPG. As I said, we've got a really good carrier player supporting us in this one. And we are going to push across and try and secure this last cap. And even if we don't secure it, just being on that cap and turning it to blue from red is going to deny this carrier the ability to, um, well, try and seal the deal for his team by killing all of us and having control of any caps. We're sat on just under 111,500 damage, which I think is quite a reasonable game on this one. I'm surprised that um, there was no high caliber in it. Um, so I'd like to know what the high caliber threshold for this one was, because um, I think we've played this um, quite, quite hard, quite aggressive, but very, very smartly um, with some good support. And I will say, you know, it's a shame that Chin went out so early um, to that Sinop because I think, you know, with him in the Nelson and the games he's been having in the Nelson, this would have been over a hell of a lot quicker with how um, well we were able to co coordinate as a team. As I said, I don't have Twist and Track or Perceptive on, so I have no idea which direction the carrier is in, but uh, having seen a spotter playing up there, um, he's probably running around the outside edge of the map or gone to the far corner. Our carrier is out looking for him. Um, I'm not going to go chasing ghosts. I'm going to sail straight into the middle of this capture point, and I can sit here, and I can wait. 
because the clock is very steadily ticking down and this is um, most certainly a win for blue team um, did we carry this one did Stu and I carry this one well we are the only two ships left alive apart from the carrier um, but I'd like to think that um, you know the Vaser did a solid job in supporting us across there on sea cap at the start and then was more than aware of that push across to the center of the map and uh, you know has done a brilliant job i've been denied a couple of kills but uh, hey that's how the game rolls sometimes eh and there you go we get denied a capture point by six seconds so four kills 111,481 damage 100 and god knows how many gun hits a few torpedo hits floods and cap resets top of the board with 3223 base xp which is a solid game by any measure um apologies uh chin for showing you at the bottom of the score sheet there but i will put up another map with chin on so i hope you've enjoyed that um, replay that talk through if you haven't already done so please do hit that subscribe button because we are on the threshold of 500 subs help me get there please guys take care and see you next time